Hi guys, welcome back. Thanks again for watching. Got a good one for you today. It's all about sunscreen. We're gonna get in because otherwise it'll be like 40 minutes long. But before I do, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that below. Of course, why wouldn't you? Like this video. You can dislike it if you dislike it, but um, I would prefer if you liked it. And yeah, let me know if you want to see anything in the future and let's just get into it. So as you could tell from the title, we're talking about sunscreen today. In the beginning, I actually filmed this before and it was a very long, arduous task, but I was only doing it about mineral sunscreens or physical sunscreens. And I decided that the most helpful thing I think would be to kind of make it a little bit broader. So I'm gonna be talking about chemical and mineral sunscreens. So I'm gonna be talking about those and then I'm gonna be applying them to my face. I have no anything on, just moisturizer, which will be erased after I wash my face for the first time. Preemptive hair up. <laughs> okay, so if you do not know, sunscreens are the product that block UV light from getting to your skin. And UV light is kind of a shorter wavelength than what we see, like the visible light that comes down and that we can see all around us. And it comes in two forms, UVA and UVB. So those are kind of terms that you've probably heard about. I'm not gonna go super in depth, but I am going to link some studies and some blogs below, which I found super helpful. And I kind of go to on a regular basis. Okay, so like I said, there are two main types of sunscreens. We have chemical, which is also called organic. And then we have mineral, which is called inorganic or sometimes physical. For the sake of this video, like I said, I'm gonna be calling them chemical and mineral. So what you'll see on the back, you'll see the ingredient list. And it's broken up always by active ingredients and inactive ingredients. For sunscreen, the active ingredients are the UV blockers. So for a chemical sunscreen, it's gonna be things like avobenzone, oxybenzone, octocrylene, octosalate, those types of things. On the other side, we have the mineral sunscreens, which active ingredients are only two. They are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. That's it. I think it's kind of silly that we're like looking at the chemical ones as very like chemically sounding because I mean, to me, titanium dioxide sounds pretty chemically. Here, I'll tell you a secret. They're all chemicals. Everything is a chemical. <laughs> so there's a lot of talk about chemicals being bad and it's not necessarily true. So I think what you have to understand is that it's all about the dose. I just want you to remember that the dose is what makes the poison kind of go into that thinking. I think it's important to start thinking that not all chemicals are bad and scary and things aren't necessarily toxic. It's just about the dose. So that is probably controversial. A lot of people don't like that because there's been this whole push for the clean beauty movement, but I think there's so much more nuance and we're only seeing like the black and white sides of things. So I try to bring a little bit more awareness to the grayness of these topics. Now, the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about before I get into it is how they work. This is one of the biggest myths that I think is pretty harmful in a lot of ways. The myth that chemical sunscreens are absorbed by your skin is true. It's not a myth. <laughs> that is absolutely true. They are absorbed and it is converted into heat because as you and I both know, you can't destroy energy. It just has to be converted. Energy exists in the world and the only thing we can do, we can't stop it, we can convert it. It's converted into heat. And it's not gonna be like when you are out in the sun and you have a chemical sunscreen on, your face is gonna be like sweltering hot. That's not true. It's gonna be very minuscule amounts. You're not gonna feel it. You, you might feel hot, but that's probably because you're in the sun. Now, the other myth is that mineral sunscreens just reflect or scatter light. That's not necessarily true. It actually is about only 10% of the UV light that it reflects or scatters. The rest of it is also absorbed by your body. And so I wanted to point these things out because that's one of the big things you'll see. And I'm gonna insert a graphic here from the beautiful, wonderful Lab Muffin Beauty. She's great. You should definitely follow her. She's based out of Australia, so she knows a thing or two about sunscreen. I just want you to be aware of that. It's a really big myth out there. You're gonna see it time and time again, and it's not 100% true. So. That all said, we're gonna get into it. Okay, so I have a lot of sunscreens here and what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be applying them to my face and then we're gonna go over them. So what I'm gonna be doing is I have a ton of sunscreens below. You can't see them, but they're here. And I'm gonna be applying one to one half, one to the other half, and I'm gonna be applying ones that are similar so that if you are looking for a certain thing like say dewy sunscreen or 
maybe a more matte one, then you can kind of get a better frame of reference of maybe two different ones that you're looking at and which one you would prefer. I'm going to start with the mineral just because it's right here and I have actually more of them. Um, not to say that I own more, I actually own quite a few chemical ones as well, but right now my chemical sunscreen um, stash is a little low. I've been using it up because when I run, I use chemical sunscreens. Otherwise, if I use a mineral one, I just sweat it off and then I have no protection. That doesn't seem like a good thing to me. <laughs> okay, enough talk. Let's get into it. I'm going to start with two really dewy ones. First up, we have the Supergoop Zinc Screen. It's all like kind of coming off because I've had it for a while and used quite a bit. And then the other one is the Say Sun Visor one. And this one is SPF 35, this one is SPF 40. We have a zinc oxide of 13% and zinc oxide 15%. So very similar. And I'm just gonna put them on my face. Okay, so I look like I just went for a run, like a 10 mile run, which I did earlier. But with the sunscreen on, that's really what it looks like. I would say they both are gonna give you this very dewy, glowy complexion. I think the main difference is gonna be the tone. This one has a bit more, while it comes out with a little bit of a tint, like you can see here, that is the tint. It's kind of like a pinkish tint. Um, I feel like the tint actually does kind of rub into the skin a little bit more than the Say one like that. You can see like there's not really a tint now, but with the Say, it's definitely a little bit darker and I think that tint does last a little bit. And for me, I think it's better. I would recommend this one for darker skin tones because there's just a little bit there, maybe even a little ashy though. Um, and then the super goop one, I would say maybe is better for lighter skin tones. It's definitely the glowier of the two and this does not set down. Like it's going to be like that all day. Um, this one, the Say, it kind of does set in a little bit and I'm not gonna say like it goes matte or anything, but it doesn't, it doesn't leave your face looking like this all day. So that's our first two. What do we think? These are really great if you have super dry skin. Um, for me, they're far too much in the summer. I would use them more in the winter, but just too much in the summer. Next up, we have two tinted ones. These, the first two were tinted as well, but these are also tinted. So this is the new Peter Thomas Roth. It is 45, de 45 degree, 45 SPF, and it has, let's see, 19.24% zinc oxide and 1.93% titanium dioxide. Then we have the Bliss Block Star. This is 30 SPF, and it has, wow, that's too close to read. 11.5% um, zinc oxide and 4.1% titanium dioxide. So again, similar, but not exactly the same. Um, this one has more coverage though, not coverage, more SPF. <laughs> so we're gonna apply them right now. Okay, so they are both applied and you can see they kind of both had that same like lightish brown tint. I will show you a swatch on my hand. So there we have it. This one is the Peter Thomas Roth. It's much lighter. This is the Bliss. Um, and so they're not exactly the same. I'm not trying to say that they are, but they are more similar than a lot of the other ones that I have. And the biggest difference is A, the Bliss one has a, a fragrance. It smells like lavender. I love the scent, but if you do not like scents or your skin does not like them, I would say no because it's quite strong. I think, again, it smells lovely, but you know, fragrance is not always what we want on our skin. The thing about the Peter Thomas Roth is it's very light for a tint. Um, not to say that there shouldn't be light ones, but the way that they market it on their box, it was like 
meant for medium skin tones. So like they had the lightest and the darkest and then the medium, all the medium ones. And it was like for these range. And I think that's a hundred percent false because right now I'm pretty tan and it does like in natural lighting, I can see a little bit of a cast. It does soak in pretty quickly, but, um, I would say it's more like light to light medium skin tones. So yeah, I don't think either of them are going to be the best for dark skin tones, but I also see people applying them wrong and it really, it's like one of my biggest pet peeves right now. Okay. So we're going to take a little break and Dana's going to go on a rant. You have likely seen this kind of demonstration. Like this is the amount of sunscreen that you need and hundred percent true. That's what you need about two fingers length, but you do not need to go and apply it. Like if I do that, even on my like lighter Caucasian skin tone, it's going to look terrible. I, I just sacrificed my face for this, but the whole point is how you see me applying it throughout the rest of the video is how you should be applying your sunscreen. This is not ever going to work. It's going to take forever to rub in and you're going to see a white cast, especially with ones that are not tinted. So please stop doing that. Please stop perpetuating that kind of myth of things don't work. That's because you're doing it wrong. So, okay. Rant over. I, now I got to wash like three layers off. <laughs> Next up, we have two new mineral sunscreens. I have done a full length video on this, so I will link that above, but we have the Olay Regenerous Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30 and the Native Sunscreen SPF 30. This one is pure zinc oxide, which is it's at 20%, which is super high. And this one is also zinc oxide at 17.5%. So very high as well. And these are non tinted, both of them. Okay, so we have them on and I think you can tell that the Olay has a little bit less of a white cast. I think I'm still going to see a bit of a white cast if I don't put any like makeup or tinted anything on over it. Um, but the, the native one definitely, I would say it just takes longer to rub in. You know, if you do rub it in pretty well, it will dissipate and it also will dissipate throughout the day. So I'm not going to see it on my skin tone as much. If you have a darker skin tone, I don't think this one's going to work for you. If you have a darker skin tone, this one could work, but you're still gonna probably have a little bit of a cast. Um, and I think the main difference is that this one is considered like a moisturizer. They say it on here. I would say it definitely leaves your skin feeling a little bit dewier. Um, this side, I mean, they both look pretty dewy right now, but this side tends to feel dewier throughout the day. This one will dry down pretty quickly and not feel like a dewy mineral sunscreen. A lot of mineral sunscreens tend to feel dewy. Um, and I think that's the way that formulators counteract the like chalky dryness of zinc oxide. So it makes sense to me. Um, but this one, it actually does dry down pretty well. I, just like I said, though, I don't think either of these are going to be great if you have a very deep skin tone. The other thing is this one is like, I think it's like $40 without the sale, but it seems like it's on sale for about $10 off. So like 28, 29. And then this one is 14 or 16. I always forget the price, but it's, relatively cheap. I would say like almost drugstore price and it's free shipping from native. So if you were looking for a cheap one and you have a lighter skin tone, I would definitely go with this. If you have drier skin and also a lighter skin tone, this one. Um, and if I had to choose one or the other, I would, it's kind of hard. I, but I do like this just because the ease of application is, it can't be beat. This one takes a long time to rub in. Okay, we have some very popular ones. This one is actually one of my most favorite from probably like a year, even more. Um, this is the Kinship Self Reflect and it is, where is it? SPF 32 and it has a whopping 22.4 zinc oxide, which is I think the highest of anything we've tried. Then the other, wrong side, <laughs> The other is the Verst, which is available at Target and I think their website as well. So very easy to find. And this is 15.2% zinc oxide and it is 35 SPF. So let's apply. <music>
Okay, so both of them do leave a little bit of a cast, even though they are kind of like a tint. Um, I will show you the tints on my hand. So the self-reflect is a bit more kind of like purplish ashy. And then the verse is definitely more of a pinky one. It kind of reminds me of the same color as the first super goop one I had. So those are the shades. I think this is helpful in knowing like if you have more of a pink undertone or if you have a neutral or like deeper skin tone, they may work better on you. Um, I, like I said, I'd used both of these before and I really liked them. But I'm actually thinking that I don't like them as much as I remembered. Just because like these two kind of, to me, I would prefer that. Like if I'm gonna have a little bit of a white cast, then I don't necessarily want this like little weird ashy color on my face, but it works for different skin tones. And that's the hardest thing. Like as a YouTuber and as someone who talks about skincare and sunscreen all the time, it's hard for me to give you a recommendation. Um, and I know that's what I'm trying to do, but it's hard just because you don't know what somebody's skin tone looks like and like what they want. So I think if you know that they are a bit tinted, they're probably gonna look a little bit more ashy on deeper skin tones. I wouldn't recommend them for deeper skin tones, honestly. Um, but yeah, they are a lot more dewy than some of the others, but they do dry down a little bit more, um, but maybe a little bit tacky to the touch for a while. How many times should you wash your face in like an hour? <laughs> not as many times as I am. Okay, so I'm not going to put any more of the mineral ones on my face um, just because I have done videos on the next few. So I'm gonna link those above and I will do hand swatches. But my thoughts on these haven't really changed and I don't think they're that drastic that I need to show you on my face. So we are talking about the May Love. No, <laughs> this is the May Love. The Sun Protector SPF 30. It's 18.6. 18.6% zinc oxide. And then this is called Sundays now, but they actually changed the name recently to Sunday, no, to not Sunday, to July Sun. So it's the same sunscreen. It's called Seashells. I'm not sure if they still have that name, but the company has totally rebranded their name. So don't look for Sundays, look for July Sun. And it is SPF 30 with 18.9% um, zinc oxide. And as I mentioned, I did a video on both of these and I'm gonna link that above and I will also link it below just in case you wanna see like what it looks like. Um, I think that video is helpful. So this is the Sundays, which is now July Sun again, and I will apply it to my hand. It does have kind of a citrusy smell to it. Yeah, it smells so good um, because it's supposed to have some vitamin C like benefits to it, so that makes sense. But um, Obviously this is not rubbed in, but it does have a little bit more of a white cast than some of the others. I would liken it to maybe the native one, um, but maybe even a little bit more. And when you apply it to your hand, it's kind of hard to tell just because I feel like you can rub it in a lot e more easily than you can on your face. So it does kind of leave me with more of a cast than a lot of the others. But the brand is beautiful. All The formulation is beautiful. I, I love it for a lot of reasons. If I had a lighter skin tone, I would go for it more, but I don't, so. And then this one is the May Love. This one has a really beautiful application, like absolutely stunning, very, um, very emollient and like slippy, which is one of the things I love in a mineral sunscreen, just because they do tend to be chalkier and kind of has the same I would say it has the same finish and same kind of look to the, as the Sunday's July Sun one. Um, the main difference with this one compared to Sunday's July Sun is this one will stay tacky on your skin. It really is meant to be kind of like a primer for makeup, so that tacky feel is not gonna go away, whereas this one is gonna go away and it's gonna be a little bit more like natural on your face. Okay, next up we have the Cetaphil Daily Moisturizer SPF 20. I don't love this one just because the SPF, everything else about it is really nice. I just, SPF 20 is too low in my opinion. Like 30 should be the bare minimum that you should be applying just because we're usually applying less than we should. We're not reapplying. So I, I tend to go for a higher number and 20 is just not recommended. And this one is 10.1% titanium dioxide and 7.8 zinc oxide. The good thing about this is it's super cheap well, not super, but like drugstore cheap. And it is more readily available just because you can get it in the drugstore or on Amazon, those types of places. It does have a bit of, um, I don't know, it's just a weird color in my opinion. 
like to me I can see the cast like look at the difference between there and here um, it's like some of the other tinted ones if you have a lighter skin tone of course it's gonna work but if you have a deeper skin tone it's probably not and it feels a little too thick for something like it feels more like makeup I'm washing my hand by the way I got a bucket over here okay this is Josie Moran Argan Daily Moisturizer SPF 47 what an odd number and this one <laughs> I have a whole video on that if you want to see my full thoughts you can go there um let's just look so it's argan oil so it's going to be very liquidy it's also so dark like I don't know whose skin tone this is but it's just like who what it's so hard to see on camera but okay like my skin is this color this is the color of this but it's like reddish and dark and it's so 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 dewy so like can you see that gosh it's really dark just just trust me on this and go watch that full video it's so dewy i mean like it has argan oil that's like the claim so i understand that but I just don't know who's gonna be wearing that. Um, maybe me when I'm really tan, but in the winter. So it's very odd. I guess if I had to choose between the two, I would go with the Cetaphil, but I don't love it, so. But I'm just giving you some options. Okay, and the last two mineral sunscreens that we have are not at all the same, but I kind of ran out, not ran out, but you know, they just had to be paired with each other. So we're not judging them against each other. This one, has a totally different look to it now, but this is the Australian Gold Mineral Lotion SPF 50. It's got 4% titanium dioxide and 4% zinc oxide, which I don't know, that's way too low. I mean, they say there's a 50 SPF, but with those numbers, it's shocking to me that they got that. That said, I love this one. I haven't used it in a while, but like, wow. I don't have much left in here. It is tinted. And one of the unique things about this is it dries down matte. So I think that's one of the things with mineral sunscreens you just don't get that often. And like I said before, I'm sure it's because zinc oxide as a chemical is gonna be more chalky, gonna be like dry and just not as appealing to put on your face. So they kind of go with the like, let's make it as dewy and moist as we can. This one for me is best if I layer it. So I can do a layer of this and then maybe a layer of something else because I still am gonna get a little bit of the cast with this. It's just not great for medium to darker skin tones, but if you have a lighter skin tone, it probably will work. And I do love this because it's cheap and readily available at the drugstore, Ulta, those kinds of places. And I forgot to mention, this one has 18.2% zinc oxide, so a very high amount. <sighs> Guys, I don't know. There's something about like being a YouTuber, I think most of us have probably experienced it, but by the end of the video, you're like, did I just work out? Like, I'm out of breath. It's just all this talking to no one. Okay, we're moving into the chemical sunscreen realm. And I only have three. And like I said before, that's only because I go through them pretty often. And I do have some recommendations of ones that I love, especially La Roche-Posay. They do a really good job for chemical sunscreen, so I will link those below, but right now I'm out of them and I'm waiting on a shipment to come. So that's what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna apply a few to my face. So first up, <laughs> we have this Glossier SPF 35 Invisible Shield. So it is 3% avobenzone, 6% homosalate, and 5% octosalate. So this one is beautiful. I just, this amount, one fluid ounce, and it's like, I forget how much, but look at that. It's just clear, invisible. Um, if you go on the Glossier website, it's, everyone is like, I love this sunscreen, but like, how are you, you're just like robbing us blind because the size is so tiny and it's not the most expensive sunscreen, but for the amount that you're getting, it's just, it's like, it's nothing. And also if you put on sunscreen every day, and then reapply like you should, you would go through this in less than a month, easily, just easily. But it's beautiful. <laughs> I wish I didn't love it. It goes on absolutely invisible, like the name suggests. 
and it just feels like you're putting like a gel cream on um I really really love it it has a light scent to it kind of like a citrusy scent if you don't like scents on your face this is not the one for you but yeah I could and I'm just like putting more and more on just because it's so easy um but it is very expensive for the amount that you're getting and you would have to order it from the Glossier website so you'd be ordering like probably once a month. The other one that I recommend to a lot of people who are just getting into sunscreen, I, I tend to recommend chemical sunscreens to people that are new mainly because they are the easiest to apply. You don't have to like be on this hunt for the perfect tint or the perfect shade or does it have a white cast, does it not? I think mineral sunscreens are wonderful but I don't know, they just seem like they're for the more experienced sunscreen person. So this and the La Roche-Posay um, cooling, wa no, what's it called? Yeah, it's like cooling water. I will, um, I will definitely put the link below because I love it. I've been through a few bottles, but this one and that are kind of my two recommendations. If you're just getting into it, you just want something that you know will work and not really disrupt anything else on your face. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost 50. They also have it in a 30, but like to me, just get the 50, why not? And it is 2.7% avobenzone, 9% homosalate, 5% octosalate, 9% octocrylene, and 4.5% oxybenzone. So this one is supposed to have a water gel lotion. So I see the lotion, but again, I don't really see like, I guess it's a little bit more like gel-like, but it's not like what I think of when I think of a gel, so. And I think, again, it's one of the better ones that you can pick up at any drugstore, any grocery store, that kind of thing. And just like a good introduction to sunscreen. It applies well. You can apply makeup over it once you let it set. Um, yeah, it's just a good, it's a good starter sunscreen. Whoa, that was a sunscreen. <laughs> All right, so this is applied. And of course I look very shiny right now, but Chemical sunscreens, for the most part, dry down. You're not gonna have your face looking like this. And they do take about 15 minutes to set, so like apply it and then wait 15 minutes before you go outside. Mineral sunscreens are, usually you can apply them and go outside right after, but this will not be like this in about 15 minutes. The other thing, a lot of people don't like chemical sunscreens and for good reason. They can be sensitizing around your eye area and usually it's certain filters, so you may find ones without it that do perfectly fine, but it is something to keep in mind, and that's why a lot of people don't like them, and I totally get that, because I've had that before where it's like around my eyes, I'm like, eh, it's stinging. But these are two very good starter ones. The Glossier one is just expensive, but if you wanna go, go for that. By all means, it's beautiful, stunning. Okay. And the last one I'm just going to apply on my hand. This is the Shiseido, what is it, Ultimate Sun Protector. And it has 2.3% avobenzone, 10% homosalate, 5% octosalate, and 5% octocrylene. This one is my absolute favorite for running and working out because it is really water resistant and it goes on absolutely invisible. But it also kind of leaves your skin feeling moisturized um, and not dried out at all. But the biggest thing that I love about this is that it is water resistant and sweat resistant. So if you work out a lot, this is the one that I would recommend. And I also have a video on that, so I will link it above as well. All right, guys, I am done. It's like 100 degrees in my tiny little office because of all the lights. And yeah, I need to be done. <clears throat> but before I finish, I did want to mention sunscreen right now is very controversial because kind of like the clean beauty space I think has made it that way. But I just wanna remind people, the best sunscreen is the sunscreen you'll actually wear. So if you get all these mineral sunscreens tinted and all this stuff, but it doesn't work for you for whatever reason, I don't think you should feel guilty because there has been this push to kind of make people feel guilty because they're not using clean, natural ingredients. And I think that's, I think it's bullshit, honestly. Um, I think you should wear what works for you. If you're active, mineral sunscreens don't always work. I know that for a fact because I run and I work out and they just sweat off my face. So it doesn't do me any good. Also, if you have a deeper skin tone, it can be exhausting trying to find something that's formulated for you and your skin tone. So I think we should get away from kind of making people feel bad if they're not making the choice that you think they should, that you think is best for their body and their skin. 
let people do what they want. If you feel strongly that mineral is better than chemical, by all means do that. But also let's do some research and figure out that some of these myths that we have been told are not all true. And, you know, we can continue to grow and learn and hopefully find something that protects us from getting skin cancer and hyperpigmentation because that's all we really want at the end of the day. <laughs> so I know this was a long one. I hope you enjoyed it. It took a lot out of me. I think I need to go take a nap now, but I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye.